Hey guys, it's Coach Carroll here with a short uh, tutorial video over how to put parts that you've already placed into an assembly. How do you place those into a sub-assembly? Okay, so this is the cam assembly that you should have already created in this lab. And you should have reasoned through the constraints by looking at the pictures and logically thinking how this operates. We can see how this operates. If I grab onto the shaft here and rotate it, as I rotate the shaft, that makes this vertical rod go up and down here because of the circle that is offset on the shaft. Okay, So we can see how that works there. Now, what I've asked you to do is I've asked you to place the body, which is this big thing there, and the three bushings, that's there's a bushing, there's another bushing, and that's the third one. Whoop. Don't want to edit that, sorry about that. I want to place those three bushings, including the body, into one sub-assembly. Okay? Now what do I mean by a sub-assembly? Well, let's look at our part browser here. I have the main assembly, which I call my cam assembly 2. Now within that, all there is are parts here. These are all the different parts within the sub or sorry, within the main assembly. Okay, so I do not have a sub-assembly within this, this main assembly, and I want to create one. And I want the body and these three bushings there to be in one sub-assembly. So I'm going to select all four of them. I'll first click on the body. Then I'll hold the shift key down and click on the next title. And click, still holding the shift, D, shift key, click on the next name and the next name. So that's the three part, or sorry, the four parts that I want to place into a sub assembly. Now I right click on that, go to component, come down here to demote, click demote. And now what does it want me to do? It wants this, this box says, can you name the new component that you're about to create? Well, I'm about to create another assembly, which will be a sub-assembly in this main cam assembly. Okay, so I'll just call this the body bushing sub-assembly there. Okay, so that's the name of it. Now, you can change the location, but I would don't recommend changing this because this sub-assembly should be located in the same folder as your main assembly. And that's where it will be located by default. So keep the, the file location the same. And now click OK. It asks, do you want to restructure the operation and may cause the following to occur? Yes, we do. Okay. Click yes. Now let's look over here in our part browser. What's changed? You see now I have an assembly icon rather than a part icon here. Okay, there's the, there's the sub-assembly that I just created. And if I expand that, if I expand that, I see here's the four parts that are actually in that sub-assembly that I created. Okay, now let's look at one other thing that happened because of that. Okay, so now after I've created the sub-assembly, Let's say I want to grab the shaft and try to rotate it. Well, what's happening? It's not behaving as it did before, is it? I, I, I click on the shaft and I want to rotate the shaft, but I end up sliding the entire assembly. Why is that? Well, if you just look here at the, these parts and this sub-assembly, are any of these grounded? No, they're not. Where is the grounded part? The grounded part was the body. You see that? It has the little thumbnail, the little thumbtack next to it. That means that body is what is grounded. But since I put a grounded component into a sub-assembly, now nothing is actually grounded in the main assembly. So I need to ground something. Okay? I'm going to ground the sub-assembly. So right-click on it and click grounded. Okay, and you notice a little thumb tack appeared which says that it's grounded. Now if I grab the shaft, click and hold my cursor down and rotate, it behaves as it did before. Okay, 
So the purpose of making this subassembly, I'm going to show you what it was. I'm going to right click on the subassembly and hit isolate. So now here is that subassembly. It's the body with those three bushings. Okay, so the purpose of doing this is that if you have a very complex assembly, uh, it would be better if you create subassemblies first that are simpler, like such as this. This is much simpler than the entire assembly. So you first create subassemblies and then you put those together. Okay, and that's what we've 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 shown here. I'll undo that isolate. Okay. Thanks for watching guys.